Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about some practice problems involving the concurrence theorems. Remember, the concurrence theorems are the circumcenter, incenter, orthocenter, and the centroid. All right. So first problem, uh, problem number 15. Given triangle ABC with A being uh, at coordinate 1, 3, B at 7, negative 3, and C at 9, 5, we're going to find the circumcenter of the triangle. So recall that the circumcenter is the point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle. And because the point of concurrency of two of the bisectors is the same as three, all we need to do is to find two of the three perpendicular bisectors. So we can choose from a list of these three, perpendicular bisector of AB, BC, or AC. And I believe I'm going to take the perpendicular bisectors of AB and BC and find that point of concurrency. All right, so let's start with the perpendicular bisector of AC. Um, and let's go back to the points again. So A is 1, 3, C is 9, 5. So midpoint, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the midpoint of AC. Uh, then I'm going to find the slope of AC. Then I'm going to find the slope of the perpendicular bisector of AC. Then I'll have a point and a slope to use in order to find uh, the equation for the perpendicular bisector. So again, let's just graphically uh, talk about what we're doing here. We're going to find the perpendicular bisector of uh, AC. So we're going to find the midpoint of AC. And then we're going to find the slope of AC because the perpendicular bisector uh, is going to have a slope which is the opposite reciprocal of AC. And then we're going to find the equation of the line that goes through uh, the midpoint of AC. All right, so let's go back. Uh, perpendicular bisector of AC, midpoint of AC. We use a midpoint formula, x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2, gives us a midpoint of 5, 4. So 1 plus 9 is 10 over 2, that's 5. 3 plus 5 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. Now we want to find the slope of AC, and the slope of AC is the change in the y values. So 5 minus 3 over the change in the x values are 9 minus 1. That gives us a slope of 1 fourth for AC. And the slope then of the perpendicular bisector is going to be the opposite reciprocal. Uh, that value is going to be negative 4. Now we have a point, the midpoint, and a slope, negative 4, for our perpendicular bisector. So we use the point slope form y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. And we substitute in the values for the point and the slope. And now we end up with y minus 4. So that's the point for y, is equal to negative 4, the slope of the perpendicular bisector, times x minus 5, which is the point, uh, the midpoint of AC. And then we solve for y in slope-intercept form, y is equal to negative 4x plus 24. All right, so we have one of the two equations. Now let's get the second perpendicular bisector of BC. And then again, graphically, what we're doing here is we're finding, again, first the midpoint of BC. And then we're going to find the slope of BC. And then we can find the uh, slope of the perpendicular bisector of BC. And once we have the slope of the perpendicular bisector, the point, uh, we can find the equation for the perpendicular bisector of BC. OK, so let's go back to BC. Midpoint of AC uh, is going to be the average of the two x values and y values for B and C. 7 plus 9 over 2, 7 plus 9 over 2 for x gives us 8, and then negative 3 plus 5 over 2 uh, gives us 1. So negative 3 plus 5 is 2, negative 2, I'm sorry, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So our midpoint of AC is uh, 8, 1. Now we want to find the slope of BC, change in the y values, 5 minus minus 3 gives us 8, over 9 minus 7, which gives us 2. Slope of 8 over 2 is equal to 4. Now the slope of the perpendicular bisector of BC is going to be the opposite reciprocal of 4, which gives us negative 1 fourth. Now we have the two values we need uh, to find the perpendicular bisector. We use the point slope form. y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, which gives us y minus 1 is equal to negative 1 fourth, the slope, times x minus 8. And then we solve uh, for y in terms of x, y is equal to negative 1 fourth x plus 3. All right, now we have two of the perpendicular bisectors for BC. We can use those two equations because they're both equal to Y, set them equal to each other, and then solve for both X and Y. 
So the circumcenter of uh, ABC is the point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors. We had the two equations, y is equal to negative uh, 4x plus 24, and y is equal to negative 1 fourth x plus 3. We set these equations equal to each other because they both equal to y, and we solve for x. So we end up with negative <clears throat> uh, 4x plus 24 is equal to negative 1 fourth x plus 3. I'm going to add 1 fourth x to both sides, and I end up with uh, 15 fourths x is equal to 21. Well, I can add, I'm doing this uh, a different way. I'm actually subtracting or adding 4x to both sides and then subtracting 3 and then reorienting the x's or the x values on the left hand side of the equation. So we end up with either negative 15 fourths x is equal to negative 21 or 15 fourths x is equal to 21. Uh, so x is equal to 21. We're going to now multiply by 4 fifths to isolate x. 21 times 4 fifteenths or 84 over 15 or we find a common factor of 3 to 28 over 5. So the x value is 28 over 5. And we use the value of x, we substitute that back in for x in either of the two equations, and we end up with a value for y of 8 fifths. So the coordinate, uh, the point of concurrency <clears throat> for the perpendicular bisectors in the circumcenter is going to be 28, 5, 8, 5. Okay, on to the next question. Given triangle RST with R equal to negative 3, 2, S4, 5, and T7, negative 2, find the coordinates of the orthocenter. So we recall that the orthocenter is a point of concurrency of the two alt altitudes, or three of the altitudes of the triangle. And again, because uh, all three meet at the same place, two are going to meet at the same place. So we only need to select two of the three uh, equations and then solve for the variable. All right, so let's see what we choose here. Well, actually, this is an interesting question because as we find out, the slope of RS is 3, 7, and the slope of ST is negative 7 thirds. We see, in fact, that uh, RS and ST are altitudes already, and this is uh, actually a right triangle. And in this case, in a right triangle, the orth orthocenter is going to be uh, at one of the vertices, and that vertex is going to be where the right angle is for the intersection of the two legs, where the right angle is in the right triangle. So orthocenter in this case is pretty simple to find out, but if we wanted to find it out, we'd find out the altitudes. Uh, if we didn't have a right triangle, we'd find out the altitudes of two of the three equations. And then we'd uh, solve for x and y for both of those equations. All right, moving on to our third and last question. We want to test the hypothesis that the coordinates of a centroid of a triangle are the averages of the coordinates of the three vertices of the triangle. And we're going to use triangle ABC with A equal to negative 2, 8, B negative 6, negative 2, and C 12, 6 to verify the hypothesis um, as dictated here and then work it out in practice uh, by finding the medians of two of the three uh, two of the three medians of the triangle. Okay, so the hypothesis is the coordinates of the centroid are going to be the averages of the x values, <clears throat> comma, averages of the y values. So we take the x values, negative 2, negative 6, and 12. We add those together. I end up with 8 plus 12, which is equal to negative 8 plus 12, which is equal to 4 over 3. 4 thirds is the x value for the coordinate. Uh, the y values, 8, negative 2, 6. That gives me 6 plus 6 is 12, divided by 3 is 4. <clears throat> so 4, 3, comma, 4 will be the point of concurrency of the centroids of the triangle. So let's figure out if that formula that we've just uh, defined is actually correct. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find, again, we only need two of the medians. We're going to find the median from A to BC, and we're going to call that point uh, the median, or the midpoint of BCD. So AD is going to be the median from A to BC. So let's go through the process. Median of A to BC. First thing we're going to do is find the midpoint <clears throat> um, of BC, negative 6, 12 over 2. So the averages of the x values, negative 2 uh, plus 6 over 2. Averages of the y values gives us a point of 3, 2 for D. We've already been given that point A is negative 2, 8. So we find the slope of the median, which is uh, the slope of AD. This is a change in the y values, 8 minus 2 over negative 2 minus 3, 
and that gives us negative six fifths. <clears throat> so neg negative six fifths is the slope of the median. Now we can find the equation of the median because we have a point, we actually have two of them, and we can choose from either one. And we have a slope. So y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, or y minus 2, I'm using point D in this case, is equal to, and they'll work out either way, whatever point you use, y minus 2 is equal to negative 6 fifths times x minus 3, or solving for y, y is equal to negative 6 fifths x plus 28. All right, so we have one of the equations. And so I draw out my median A to uh, D. Again, we found the midpoint. Uh, we found the slope of AD, uh, negative 6 fifths, and then we could use a point slope formula to solve for y to create an equation in slope intercept form. All right, next we're going to find the median C to AB, and we're going to call the midpoint of ABE, so it's going to be the equation of the line CE. And we're going to go through the same process we did in the last slide, the last couple slides. So first we find out the midpoint of AB, which we called E. And the midpoint is the average of the x and y values. Again, negative 6 plus negative 2 over 2 gives us negative 4. Uh, negative 2 plus 8 over 2, which is 6 over 2, gives us 3. So our midpoint E is negative 4, 3. Uh, we've already been given that C has a coordinate of 12, 6. And then we find the slope from C to E. It's just the change in the y values, 6 minus 3 over 12 minus and minus 4 or 3 16 So the slope of the median C to AB, or the slope of CE, is going to be 3 16 Now again, we use our point slope formula. Y minus Y1 is equal to M times X minus X1. Y, and again, we can use either C or E as a point, but we have to use both coordinates or values <clears throat> uh, from that given point. Y minus 3 is equal to 3 16 the slope times X minus minus 4. Uh, that leaves us with y is equal to 3 16 x plus 60 over 16. I have a common factor of 4 and 60 and 16. Final equation y is equal to 3 16 x plus 15 over 4. All right. Uh, so uh, graphically, c to e, uh, midpoint negative 4, 3, slope of 3 16 equation 3 16 x plus 15 fourths. Okay, now let's see if we can write this a little bit easier for you. So you can read it. Uh, we have our two equations, y is equal to 3 16 x plus 15 fourths, y is equal to negative 6 fifths x plus 28 over 5. <clears throat> I set the two equations uh, equal to each other because they're both equal to x. I am going to add 6 fifths x to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 15 fourths from both sides. So I end up with 3 16 x plus 6 over 5 x is equal to 28 over 5 minus 15 over 4. Now I'm going to simplify that. I find a common denominator uh, for the left hand and the right hand side of the equation. For the left hand side, it's 80. I end up with 50, 15 over 80x plus 96 over 80x is equal to 112 over 20 minus 75 over 20. We're getting lost in the fractions here. Uh, and I end up with 111 over 80x is equal to 37 over 20. Uh, I multiply both sides by 80 over 111. Uh, and believe it or not, I end up with a value for x of 4 over 3. Having uh, been given x is equal to 4 over 3, I substitute that back in to either equation, and then I solve for y. So I can say, let's do it in the first equation, y is equal to 3 sixteenths times 4 thirds, which is our value for x, plus 15 over 4. Uh, I multiply these two together and I get y is equal to one fourth <clears throat> plus fifteen fourths which gives us y is equal to sixteen over four or four okay so four thirds four is our point of concurrency uh, for the medians of the triangle now we're going to go back to determine whether or not uh, that point is what we had originally calculated using the formula that was given to us. 4, 3, 4, remember that number. And 4, 3, 4, in fact, is the same number that we determined from the hypothesis. So, in fact, uh, a, a simpler way of finding out the centroid is just to use this formula rather than to go uh, to find the point of concurrency or the intersection of the two medians. All right, that's it for Ott and Math. Thanks for joining. Uh, if you need more information on concurrence theorems, you can go back and revisit the lesson on the concurrence theorems and or come back and join us in any other lesson or practice problem in the next edition of Otten Math.